Hello, fabulous fourth graders of St. Lucie County. I am Miss Owens, the math coach at Longwood Elementary, and I am super stoked about working with you guys again. Thank you for tuning in with me. Let's get into today's lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about measurement and our focus will be on customary conversions. The standard for our lesson today is MD11 and the standard reads, the student will be able to solve problems involving measurement and conversion of measurements from a larger unit to a smaller unit. Okay, so whenever you're solving problems involving measurement, there is a handy dandy tool that you're going to need, or I should say a resource. It's the reference sheet. You may have seen this before. The reference sheet contains conversions of the metric system and the customary system, as well as units of time and area and perimeter. So you can typically find one of these inside of a composition, composition notebook um, behind the front cover, or you can just Google grade four FSA math reference sheet. In the meantime, I will provide some conversions for you, so make sure you have something to write it down on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our units of length. So we're gonna begin with a foot, and I'm not talking about the one at the end of your leg with the five toes. I'm actually talking about 12, whoops, inches. So 12 inches is equivalent to one foot. And a foot is about the length of the long side of a sheet of notebook paper or the long side of a textbook. One foot is equivalent to 12 inches and one inch is about the length of the tip of your thumb from the tip to the first line segment or one inch is about the length of a standard size paper clip. So moving on to the yard. One yard is about the length of a baseball bat. And if you take three feet, you will match the length of one yard. So write this down. One foot is equivalent to 12 inches. One yard is equivalent to three feet. And then we're gonna move into the mile. If I were to use feet to get a mile, I would need 5,280 feet. That's right. One mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. If I were to use yards to make a mile, I wouldn't need 5,000 and something miles, uh, sorry, yards, because the yards are longer than the feet. I would only need 1,760 yards. Write that down. One mile is equivalent to 1,760 yards. Okay. So you might ask yourself, why, why do I need to know about the units of length for the customary system? Well, thank you for asking. You need to know about the units of length because when you're trying to figure out how tall or wide or long or short or the distance between two points, you need to understand the units of length. So now we're gonna move into units of capacity. Capacity refers to how much liquid a container can hold. So we're gonna start one of the largest units of capacity, a gallon. A jug of milk is about the size of a gallon. Then we have the quart. If I were to take the quart and pour it, fill it up with a liquid and pour it into the gallon until the quart, until the gallon becomes full, I would have to fill up this quart and dump it four times. Write this down. One gallon is equivalent to four quarts. Then we're gonna take a look at something that's a little bit smaller than a quart. The pint. If I were gonna take, if I was going to take a pint container, fill it up with liquids, 
and pour it into the quart container until the quart container becomes full, I'd have to fill this pint container up twice. Write this down. One quart is equivalent to two pints. Now we're gonna move to something that's a little bit smaller than a pint. A cup. The standard size cup is, is equivalent to eight smaller units called fluid ounces. So if I was going to fill this cup up with the liquid and pour it into the pint container until the pint container becomes full, I would have to fill this up twice. One pint is equivalent to two cups, and one cup is equivalent to eight fluid ounces. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at pounds and ounces. The fluid ounces are used to measure liquid, but the ounces are used to measure weight. So if you wanna know how heavy or light an ounce is, take a slice of bread, hold it in the palm of your hands, and just feel that weight. It's really light, isn't it? In fact, one slice of bread is about one ounce. And if you get a loaf of bread with about 16 slices, there you will have the weight of one pound. One pound is equivalent to 16 ounces. You might ask yourself, why is it important to learn about capacity and weight? Well, thank you for asking. We need to know about capacity and weight because with weight, we want to know how heavy or light something is. And with capacity, we like to know how much mass or liquid a single container can hold. Let's get into today's lesson. Our key idea or strategy for solving these problems says, record measurement equivalents in a two column table. And we know that we're going to practice solving problems by converting larger units to smaller units. So the problem says, complete the table and write the rule for each. So we're gonna convert feet to inches. Go ahead and draw your two column table. And while you're drawing your table, don't forget to label your units, feet to inches. And you'll see me using abbreviations throughout this lesson. So we're gonna start with just one foot. Do you remember how many inches is in one foot? You're right, 12. So one foot is equivalent to 12 inches. And we're gonna abbreviate inches with an I in. So if one foot is 12 inches, inches is another if I join in another foot and now I have two feet absolutely two feet is equivalent to 24 inches what if I join in another foot every time I join in another foot if I want to express that in inches, I'm joining in another 12 inches. So I started out with just one set of 12 inches. Now I have two, and then, then I had two, and then now I have three. So I have 12 three times. Do you know how many inches is equivalent to three feet? Awesome. Three feet is equivalent to 36 inches. Have you figured out the rule yet? Do you know what's going on? Do you know the rule that's in place for converting feet to inches? The more feet we add on, the higher the number gets. And last week we learned when we're working with patterns, if the, number, if the numbers in the pattern are increasing, then we're either multiplying or adding. Have you figured it out yet? Yes. If I were to put up four feet, then I would have 12 four times. And four times 12 equals 48, or is equivalent to 48. 
So four feet is equivalent to 48 inches. And the rule here is multiply by 12. Wonderful. Thank you guys for helping me solve these problems. So we are out of time, but I want to leave you guys with a practice problem. I want you to convert nine gallons to quarts. And I'll start you off. Remember the key idea says, record equivalent measurements in a two column table. So I'll start you off. Don't forget to label the top part of your chart. Do you remember how many gallons, how many quarts is equivalent to one gallon? Do you remember? This would be a good time to use your notes. One gallon is equivalent to how many quarts? Four. So then if I have two gallons, then I have four quarts two times. So then I'll have eight quarts. Well, that's all the time that I have for now. Finish solving this problem and we'll solve it on Thursday. We'll go over it Thursday and I hope you use this strategy and you come up with the same answer that I come up with. Thank you guys for being fabulous. Tune in next time.